Coming up on today's edition of the Bulls Report, the first topic we're going to be diving into is if a Patrick Williams breakout season could be heading our way as Bulls fans. And then we're also going to be diving into yet another wild Bleacher Report trade idea. And I'll say this first, I absolutely hate that trade idea. So make sure you stay tuned to the end of today's video and see what Bleacher Report suggested. My name is Patrick Seatman. Welcome into today's edition of the Bulls Report. And let's start off by breaking down Patrick Williams as the former fourth overall pick for the Chicago Bulls has maybe not lived up to that fourth overall pick selection, but I do think the breakout season could potentially be coming in this upcoming year. But overall, like I just mentioned, he was the fourth overall pick in the 2020 NBA draft, six foot eight, 215 pounds with a seven foot wingspan really speaks to his defensive potential with that just natural big size that he possesses on the defensive end of the floor. But his stats from this past season, he averaged just over 10 points a game, four boards a night, 1.2 assists on really solid efficiency. That's why I'm also kind of uh, anticipating that he takes that next step. 46.4 from the deck, 41.5% from three, and shot very solid percentage from the free throw line, sitting at 857 but I want to dive into some of his advanced shooting numbers because if we just look at the basic box scores here, we're only getting half of the story. But let's break it down kind of per shot on an NBA floor. So his three-point catch-and-shoot percentage this past year was 41.9. I absolutely love that. You know, these 3 and D wings in the modern-day NBA, a lot of their open shots just come from straight-up catch-and-shoot off a you know, dribble penetration where the guard gets to the lane, kick it out to a wide-open shooter, and he knocks it down. And then his corner shooting, which I think is incredibly inter interesting, his left corner three-point percentage sits at 54.5%. That makes, that makes a lot of sense. You know, if you're in the left corner as a shooter, you know, and he's a righty, obviously you're catching it here, and you kind of have just an easier look at the rim in comparison to the right corner, where he shot only 38.6%. Just obviously righties have a better time and just a more efficient time shooting the ball from the left corner in comparison to the right. And his mid-range number sitting at 42.2%. That really wasn't really a big part of his game this past season. You know, obviously if the defense was running some drop coverage, he has shown some capability of stepping in there and knocking down that mid-range shot. But a lot of his shots did not come from that, uh, you know, uh, came from that uh, you know place on the court. And then less from 10 feet, him getting to the rack, he sat at 54.4% which is a little bit lower than I would like, especially for a six foot eight, you know, 215 pound wing. I would like them to have, you know, a better ability to slash and get downhill and get to the rim. But overall, Patrick Williams, his shooting numbers, he's solid. I do think the efficiency is why I really do believe a potential breakout could be coming for this man in this upcoming year. But overall, his catch and shoot ability at 41.9%. The corner shots, very solid as well. Obviously, shooters shoot better from the left and then to the right. But a point I do want to make with Patrick Williams is the shot attempts per game. You know, we look at the Bulls, you know, top five shot attempts per game leaders here. Obviously, Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan are going to get a bulk of the shot attempts. They are the two best players. They are the two best scorers on this roster, and they're going to get majority of the looks. Levine sitting at 18, DeMar at 17, and then Nikola Vucevic at 14. But then we have a monumental gap between the big three to the fourth best player, which obviously being Patrick Williams. We only had 8.3 shot attempts per game. And I do think if the shot attempts go up and the overall usage rate goes up for P-Dub, I do think he'll just be a more efficient and productive player in this upcoming season. And his usage rate this past year sat at 15.7%, which is decent. That just means when the Bulls are on offense, 15.7% of the time, he has the ball in his hands and he's making the plays. But most of the time with his game in this Bulls offense, especially on the offensive side of the floor, he will get the ball later in the shot clock. And that normally means it's going to be more catch and shoot looks or more just one dribble looks. It was actually funny enough. We did a little deep dive into his uh, numbers here this past year. He didn't take a single shot attempt where he dribbled the ball more than seven times before that shot went up. Just a little cool, interesting tidbit on Patrick Williams. But that's his usage rate, 15.7% from this past season. I'll be wrapping up my thoughts on Patrick Williams here in a second. But I want to ask you guys this. Predict Patrick Williams' stats for next season. This is going to be the pinned comment on today's video. So YouTube, they're going to throw you an ad break your way. Sit back, let it play, and let me know what you think Patrick Williams' stat line will look like for next year. Here's my prediction right now. I have him taking that next leap. You know, obviously him over and averaging 10 points a game this past season, I have that going up to 14.5. 
I do think his rebounding numbers will relatively stay the same. I have him going up to 6.3. Assist numbers, obviously with the ball not being in his, in his hands as much, he's not going to really be able to show off that playmaking ability, but I do think it will have an uptick getting up to 3.1, and I think the efficiency will stay the same. Obviously, I do ex don't expect him to shoot 41.5% from deep throughout his, any, or throughout his NBA career. That would just be fantastic if he did that, but I do think with more shots, it will come down just a little bit, but by no means is 39.2% bad at all. If this was his numbers for the past or for next season, I would be absolutely thrilled. But I do want to make this note about Patrick Williams on the defensive side of the floor because this is where I think his you know true potential will show, and this is where I think he is most valuable on that side of the uh, basketball floor, and that's kind of the best part of his game is that overall defensive capability. Last year in deflections per game, he was at 1.9, and deflections per game is a key stat that I love looking at. Because, you know, we can look at steals per game, which he was point, uh, point 0.9 per night, but deflections per game. That's just getting your hands in passing lanes. And it's a really key stat to kind of know how a defensive player can disrupt an offensive kind of overall scheme and overall play. Because you get a deflection and you get a hand on a ball, it can really kind of throw off another team's offense. And he's also was higher or really high in the league in terms of ranking contested shots per night were three-point shots, two-point five, two-point shots, 3.0. But why I do believe in Patrick Williams, and the number one reason for this is his overall size. Like I mentioned, six foot eight, 215 pounds. That's seven foot wingspan. He's going to be able to guard one through four at a very high level. And then his work ethic. You know, coming into the NBA, we all questioned his three point shooting ability. We all said that is the number one thing he needs to work on if he wants to take that next step. And this past season, man, he shot 41.5% from deep. So it kind of speaks to his work ethic. Clearly, he has been, you know, improving that part of his game and really working on it during the offseason. And then the catch and shoot ability. You know, I said the 3 and D archetype in the NBA, catch and shoot ability is key for these guys. And he improved that a ton, shooting almost 42% from downtown. And then obviously the defense. Like it kind of speaks to the size and the work ethic he also has in his game. But his overall defensive capabilities, I think, is why he's going to have a very long career in the NBA. I think he's going to be a key contributor to an NBA title contender if he just gets in the right situation eventually in his career. Overall, that's why I do believe in Patrick Williams. That's why I do think a breakout season could be coming for our man P-Dub. But now let's dive into it. I, I honestly did not want to do this at first, show this Bleacher Report trade, just because I hate it so, so much. But they had a trade idea actually involving... Patrick Williams heading to the Washington Wizards and this is it I just can't believe this and you know what pisses me off most about this trade idea so it is the Bulls receiving Tyus Jones Corey Kispert and then them sending Patrick Williams and Dalen Terry but this is what bothers me so much they have the Bulls including a 2026 second round pick so they're saying if this trade was just straight up these two players that the Bulls are getting and these two players that the Wizards are receiving wouldn't be enough. The Bulls would have to add in a second round pick, and I completely agree. And before I dive into uh, what uh, the beat reporter said about this trade, first off, I'm not trading Patrick Williams unless it's for getting an absolute whale or an NBA superstar, because I do think Patrick Williams, and he is that one kind of key cornerstone piece that the Bulls can really die or build around if they were ever to shift to a full rebuild. You know, let's just sit back and say the Bulls are five games below 500 at the next year's NBA trade deadline, and they decide, hey, we're going to trade Zach Levine, we're going to trade DeMar DeRozan, we're going to hit this full rebuild. I want Patrick Williams to be that building block that the Bills kind of build around. This is what Greg Swartz, the beat reporter for the for Bleach Report, said on the Bulls' perspective on getting this trade done. He said the Bulls looked like one of the best teams in the East last time Lonzo Ball played. Yet the veteran point guard is likely to miss another full season due to the knee injury. Chicago helped cover his absence with the signing of Javon Carter. But he's more of a rotation piece instead of a full-time starter. Jones was previously dealt this offseason to Washington in a three-team deal that landed Marcus Smart with the Memphis Grizzlies and Chris Stops Porzingis in Boston with the Celtics. The 27-year-old would be wasted with the rebuilding wi Wizards, however, and could make a real difference in Chicago's overall success as their new starting floor general. And listen, I mean, I may disagree with this trade, but he's not wrong. The Bulls do need a more pure point guard at that spot. Like, I love Javon Carter. I think he's going to be great for the Chicago Bulls. You know, what he brings defensively, picking up guards 94 feet. But could he really, truly be a full-time starting point guard for the Bulls? I think the jury is still out on that. 
But talking about Tyus Jones here a little bit, I'm an absolute big fan of his game. And this past season, he played like a true, true point guard. And the, these numbers, keep in mind, was him backing up John ja Morant for most of this past year. But 10 points a night, five assists a night, and again, on really solid efficiency, and that's why I am such a big fan of his game. You know, shooting 44% from the deck and 37% from deep, that's what you want to see out of your starting point guard. I think he could really be the player that kind of is this catalyst in this Bulls offense and gets the guys just easier looks because we saw it. When Bulls had Lonzo Ball and they were first in the Eastern Conference before the um, obviously the injury went down with them and the Bulls really kind of took that landslide, it wasn't just Lonzo's kind of on-the-court production that you know impressed me so much. It's the easier looks he got for guys like DeMar DeRozan, who was averaging damn near 28 a game when Lonzo Ball played. So adding a guy like Tyus Jones, I think, I, I think it could help the Bulls a lot. But man, I don't want to give up Patrick Williams, Daylon Terry, and a second-round pick for an undersized guard. So I'll throw this question your guys' way. I'm assuming a lot of you guys will be typing your Ds for decline, but would you accept this trade of the Bulls receiving Tyus Jones and Corey Kispert and the Wizards receiving Patrick Williams, Daylon Terry, and a 2026 second-round pick? Give me an A for accept or a D for decline. As always, thank you guys so much for watching today's edition of the Bulls Report. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. I want to be your go-to Chicago Bulls YouTube channel. And this is your first time coming across our channel. We post videos almost every single day. So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Stay in the loop of all Bulls content up until the regular season gets underway in October. We'll see you guys next time. Go Bulls.